Welcome to Roundel Live, and this one promises to be a charged up episode as we look into the billing mess at Manx Gas, electricity, electric cars, and Kroger. Frank, well, you are a customer. Of Manx Gas. Are you satisfied at the moment? Because I know there's a lot of people out there who aren't. Well, to be honest, my last bill wasn't as bad as I expected it, thanks to a new boiler. If you haven't got a new boiler, Jesus, get one. The bit difference is huge. But I have cancelled my direct debit recently after I saw all the horror stories about wrong bills, late bills, double bills. And I didn't want to take a risk because, you know, you don't want the same bill or wrong bill to be taken two or three times. And so, yeah, I've cancelled that. I have to pay it manually now. But, yeah, there seems to be a bit of a mess. And it kind of makes me think, you know, would we be better off if the gas supplier for this nation would be nationalised? Well, that is quite a question. But regarding our power management on the island, the Manx Utility Authority has got a lot of challenges ahead, haven't they? There's a huge debt uh, in hand and really... I'm not quite sure you mentioned there just about buying a new boiler. That was quite casual. What would one of those throw you back? You would have to ask my landlord. But it's going to be a fair amount of cash, isn't it? Yeah, they're a not lot cheap, of people but can't afford. Yeah, if you're in rented accommodation, you should check. You know that it is up to scratch that you have a new one. But I think in the long term, it's it's something that pays for its not pays for itself, but it pays dividends, its value because. You pay so much more with an old one. But let's let's break this down. If we look at um, the lowest income earners who are renting privately, chances are that they're in flats in certain areas indoors. Chances are that they're on gas, isn't it? Yeah, I think For, the majority. Yeah. Straight away because of the the actual size yeah. of the you know the oil um, kind of backup to to make that happen. So you know they're really up against it at the moment. I mean, fair play to our man in Kurt Michael, St. Barry Murphy, who I love his crusading, you know, for the gas uh, cause. It'd be great maybe to have him on the show uh, sometime in the future. But really, I think we're uh, we're struggling. I think power on the island, I think we must be the, and I think it has been decreed, we're like the least efficient, is it? Like in the I've world for, for green know. energy? Yeah, I've heard something. We're, we're, pr- we're pretty hopeless. And then we've got the likes of our, um, you know, public buildings, say the hospital and issues regarding gas tariffs for that and the hospital being such a massive, massive building, isn't it? I think it's one of the biggest hospitals uh, in the UK, isn't it? I think on the floor space. But anyway, that's another thing. We've got some real issues to really address on on this thing. Um, And for the future, what have we got? You know, there's a lot of voices for wind power, but really there's the C word out there in the background, Mm. lurking in the sea just off the mackled coast. Kroger, you think? What's going to happen there? Well, they do say it could be the answer to all our prayers. It could give us free energy and then some. Is it really going to be like that? See, here's the thing. I can see the figures. I can see the potential for it. I can see the environmental concerns for it, of course. But then I'm thinking, even if there is something there worth exploring and that could pay for a lot of things, we all know that as soon as the government gets involved with something, it very often doesn't end well. And I'm just... A little bit afraid, not just that there's environmental damage and that we should move away from fossil fuels, but that government will screw it up. Isn't it the get-out-of-jail-free card, though? Isn't it the solution for years and years of financial mismanagement? It's the solution for losing that VAT cushion that was so generous from the UK that we've missed so much because we're having to support all this you know, bloated government and so forth. So really, for the sake of, what can I say, a few microns of gas going into the atmosphere, and you look at what's happened across the oh, water, <laughs> across the water in Cumbria, where they've sanctioned, you know, the the coal mine there. Which direction is this going? I think we should move away from fossil fuels. There's no doubt about it. That you know, even if you don't believe in climate change and this and that, it's never good to pump all the stuff into the atmosphere. But then none of these solutions tend to be really that perfect. But renewables make most sense for me. 
because they seem most environmentally friendly. But you know what the argument's going to be, is that it's going to generate so much income that everything else we can make green. We can be like the most greenest uh, community, the most greenest nation in the world. But is it Everyone can have a sol solar panel, but we've just got this gas field, you know, uh, producing um, the naughty stuff, should we say, and generating, say, £200 million a year in financial benefits for the island. And Will it, though? Apparently. Apparently, and that's the problem word. Apparently, apparently, but if it does, you know, just imagine that, what, what the state of the island would be. It would be like, you know, one of these oil-rich countries out in Arabia. It'd be no, absolutely but then it would just go the way it went before, and the government would find ways to spend it all on white elephants. You know they would. It could be a They're place... Like kids in a sweet shop. It could be a place where the excellence in education and health and lifestyle and well-being and it could be completely green and preserved and it, it could, could be, be a conservation area beyond belief it could justify the the biosphere status there's already things you can do now you know i'm driving my lovely little environmentally friendly electric car i'm already doing my part so oh yes go away. yeah the privileged electric car group yes those people can afford electric cars not, not only privileged not anymore only getting cheap tariff overnight that isn't available to your average person in the street but you're also getting you're also getting privileged parking on douglas promenade the key spots right outside those yes. places that you visit within walking distance of strand street you've got a great big um, plug is it going in fact I, i'm wondering with those plugs i mean mm. how does it work do you have like a, a credit card or you put like yeah, coins in the meter or what so the MUA is, there's there's loads of, in the, if you go to the UK, there's loads of providers. The MUA wisely has decided to go with only one. They're called Podpoint. You download the app, put your credit card in, and then you just load up five pounds, 10 pounds. You don't need much money. Okay. And it's the same all over the island. There is actually a rule if we if, if I use the parking space to say along the prom, I have to actually charge. Mm. So the, the traffic rules, the parking rules say, if you just park there without plugging in, you can't get a ticket. Okay. But we're not privileged anymore. Okay. EVs are cheap now. So say if I've got one of these cars and yes. it might have cost me say 15, 20. Yeah, you get you get but remember, for money. But now. remember there's no grant for it guys and gals. It's not like you're in the UK. There's no assistance, there's no green grants, there's nothing for you. Okay. That bit hasn't been thought out. But if I'm managed to acquire one of these vehicles and I'm rolling along the Douglas Promenade trying to work out which is a zebra crossing and which isn't and then I pull up outside my favourite pub, Quids Inn maybe, or nearby there. I plug it in. How, how long have I got? How long does it take to charge? It depends on the car. The chargers on the Prom, they're 7 kilowatt chargers, so they're the slower types. But even if I, you're allowed to park for two hours, I believe, all of them, so that can give you plenty of range, 30, 40, 50 miles. Easy. Okay, and then there's the other one. How come you don't get people messing about with the cables? Because you just have these things Because they're plugged around. in, they're locked in when you're locking. Oh, I see, and I you see. Well, there you go. If you're privileged and well off, you can enjoy those. We are not privileged. Those lovely little gems for your shopping so, day but, out. No, but here's the thing. So the, the MUA does this or did this. For a while, electric charging was free. For years, actually, it was free. And unfortunately, I bought my car after they stopped doing it. Boom. This is done to incentivize people to, you know, pick up these new technologies. And these early, early adopters, they pay for the infrastructure and for everything to come in. And now EVs are cheap. You can get a used leaf for less than 10 grand. And if you get that EV, then you get the EV tariff in your house, which means half price electricity f during the night from midnight till whoa, 8. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. So that's not just for the plug for the car. That's like no, that's for the half price. So you can heat your house. Yes. You can have your electric blanket on all night. Yes. You dry your washing machine, your dishwasher, everything. You just plug it in to start at 1 a.m. But why isn't that open for everyone? Just if I you've got an electric you? car. So you're really going to lose it when I tell you that the MUA heat pump tariff, the electric heat pump, which is technology they're trying to push now, this is the next big thing, is even cheaper. Okay, just to explain what a heat pump is. I'm not quite sure. Is it something you just stick in the ground? It is a very modern and advanced way to heat your house by simply yeah, taking outside heat, so to say. And it's very efficient. And they're trying to, it's yeah. very expensive at the moment to put into a house, which is why they give you the yeah. cheap tariff to yeah. you know, get people yeah. off gas, for example. Yeah. So you have to own the house and you're not living in a flat. So you have to have a front garden or something. Is that right? No. 
Not really. Not that I'm aware. We need to investigate this further. Not enough facts known here. If you've got any comments, please put them in the box. If you are a heat pump user, please tell us what it's all about because I'm really confused on this. But what really does get my go is Frank's almost free electricity and his privileged parking. You know he drives a hybrid, right? He's hypocrite. No, you know, I'll tell you the no, story. No, hybrid, I'll battery, story. battery. Yeah, okay. I drive a hybrid. I yes. buy a Hyundai, and it's for my business. It's for my taxi work. I've got an airport taxi plate, and you might have seen me doing other jobs and things around the town. And, of course, is there any assistance for that, for, you know, my commercial necessity to be green? Is there any assistance for that? No. Absolutely zero. Can I get a government grant? No. Have I spoken to MHKs about it? Yes. Are they interested? No, because nothing's happening. And I tell you what, this is this is where we are at the moment. We're just stuck, aren't we? It's the privileged few who are getting looked after. Not privileged. Ran over. I think that will do for this episode. I'm not privileged. EVs are cheap. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. I'm off for a drive. That's a good idea. <laughs>